Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how the forces acting on a skydiver change with velocity. You should then be able to represent the motion of a skydiver on a velocity time graph. And all of this is for triple physics students only. Now this is a really important topic as it often comes up in the exams. My advice is to learn it off by heart. OK, as soon as the skydiver jumps out of the plane, the only force acting is weight. This is due to gravity and you need to remember that this force will not change during the journey. So because of weight, the skydiver experiences a resultant force acting downwards, so they accelerate towards the ground. As they fall, the skydiver experiences friction with air molecules. We call this force air resistance and it acts upwards. However, the weight is still greater than the air resistance, so the skydiver continues to accelerate towards the ground. As the skydiver's velocity increases, the air resistance also increases. At a certain point, the air resistance balances the weight. Now there's no resultant force, so the velocity stays constant. The skydiver has reached terminal velocity. This velocity is extremely great, and the skydiver would die if they hit the ground. So at this point, the skydiver opens their parachute. The surface area now increases, and this causes air resistance to massively increase. At this point, the air resistance is now greater than the weight, so there's a resultant force acting upwards. This causes the skydiver to decelerate. In other words, their velocity decreases. Finally, because the velocity is decreased, the air resistance also decreases. At some point, the air resistance will balance the weight and the resultant force will be zero. At this point, the velocity will stay constant. So now the skydiver is falling at a lower terminal velocity. This is now safe for them to hit the ground. Now we can represent the journey of a skydiver on a velocity time graph and it looks like this. So I'd like you to pause the video now and see if you can describe the motion of the skydiver in terms of the forces acting. OK, as soon as the skydiver jumps out of the plane, the only force is weight. The skydiver accelerates towards the ground. As the skydiver falls, air resistance acts upwards. Weight is still greater than air resistance, so the skydiver continues to accelerate. As the velocity increases, air resistance also increases. When air resistance balances weight, the resultant force is zero, and the velocity stays constant. This is the terminal velocity. Now as we said, this velocity is extremely great, and the skydiver would die if they hit the ground. So at this point, the skydiver opens their parachute. The surface area now increases, and the air resistance massively increases. The air resistance is now greater than the weight, so the resultant force now acts upwards. Because the resultant force is now acting upwards, the skydiver now decelerates. They're still moving towards the ground, but at a much lower velocity. Because the velocity has decreased, the air resistance also decreases. When air resistance balances the weight, the resultant force is zero. The velocity is now constant, and this is a lower terminal velocity. Finally, the skydiver lands. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on the forces acting on a skydiver in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. 